There are so many design programs that are on must-learn lists. Rive, Figma, Canva, Cavalry, Fusion, that one that no one remembers, Blender, Houdini, AI, and now Unreal Engine has released its motion design tools, previously Project Avalanche, as part of its 5.4 preview. But with all of that, the big question is, why bother? If you already know After Effects and Cinema 4D, why take time away from the latest binge series to try and hack away at a new skill? The non-clickbaity, reasonable response is, of course, it depends. Everyone's different. But I'm making a YouTube video, and I'm someone who used to use After Effects in Cinema 4D, and I switched over to mostly Unreal. But I still use After Effects. So, to make this a real YouTube video, I've compressed my learning into a, an easy to digest list. A succulent Chinese meal! This list will go through the good and the bad. Why you might want to learn Unreal Engine or not. Let's start off with the good. Watch this. I have a 3D scene, full reflections, global illumination, and I'm moving about like it's nothing. Look at the frame rate. Think about what a 3D scene is like in After Effects, or even in Cinema 4D when you have too many viewport settings turned on. Plus, now I'm going to drop in some footage. And it's playing back, in real time, in 3D, with reflections, and everything. To contrast, I'm going to drop some footage into an After Effects project just to see what the response time is. Blank project, blank timeline, one piece of footage. Get used to the phrase, one eternity later, because a lot of things take time in Unreal Engine. The installer is large, so you've got to download it and wait. Every project, it's going to take up a fair amount of room. And whenever you start up a new project for the first time, Compiling shaders will be part of your recurring nightmares. Then, once you open a project, you have to enable a bunch of plugins that you're going to need, including the motion design plugin. Yes, it, it does all get better. Like, once you've opened it the first time, it doesn't take that long to open at all. And I found ways to make things smoother, including going as far as making my own project template, which I'll tell you about later. But the wait times just become part of your life. I still haven't found anything approaching the fidelity of Unreal Engine in real time. I'm just going to show you what sold me the first time. Soft shadows. They are notoriously hard to do in real time. Generally you'd have to bake them and try not to touch them, but Unreal has found a way to figure them out on the fly. And they store them in virtual shadow maps with some kind of voodoo so you can have dynamic lights which move the shadows and they stay amazing. I, I don't know how it works. but it good. There is a lot that you have to learn about games and Unreal Engine to debug anything. Stuff that you wouldn't have to deal with in other programs, other renderers, a whole bunch of toggles and switches are going to be new to you not only because they're in Unreal but because they are games centric and they have different names for things. Some things are only accessible through the commands that you type into the console terminal. These are called console variables and we are very lucky that we have people like William Foucher, who tends to be the person I turn to when things go badly. And of course I'm biased, but fellow Aussie Dylan Brown is also an absolute legend when it comes to Unreal Engine. We have shadows, but we also have multiple 4K frames of full 3D rendered per second at final quality. If you spend a bunch of time optimizing your Octane scenes, you might be lucky to get a frame every two seconds. This is an order of magnitude faster. The engine is designed to give you the best looking visuals in the smallest amount of time. Once you've got those gorgeous visuals, it is a little bit hard to get it out. You have to set up your render presets for each new project. And when you're setting up these render presets, do you remember how I was talking about debugging visual problems with console variables? Those same console variables need to be included in your render presets. I got around this by developing my own project template, which includes render presets. I've called it the Motion Graphics Default Template, and I've organized a few things that I use all the time, all of the plugins that I use are turned on. You can just choose it in the projects menu when you start a new project. If you're interested, it's up on Gumroad. It's linked in the description. I'm sure you've heard about the motion design mode by now. It's released in its first form in 5.4 Preview, 
and I have been using it a bunch more than I expected to set up things that I would normally do in After Effects like 2D, 2.5D layouts and there's even funky stuff like from Cinema 4D you've got cloners and effectors and some ideas that I've seen in other plugins like keyframeless animators and there's a material system that feels more like Photoshop than other 3D programs. It's honestly great. You can have an engaging animated scene set up in minutes. For someone coming from After Effects or Adobe products, Unreal is a lot. Motion design mode is fairly understandable, but it suffers from the same thing as Unreal Engine. It's a general sense of overwhelming scale. Unreal has been used to make games as large as Final Fantasy and Harry Potter, so it's, it's gonna have the layers that we don't understand. With so many switches and dials and unfamiliar terminology, it's very understandable why a lot of people turn away. I don't really have a solution, but I do hear you. And this channel will always hopefully take people who are familiar with the world of motion design and take them along into Unreal Engine in a way that is at least comprehensible. From my own experience, it just takes a while of existing in the world of Unreal for the terminology and expectations of various objects to become a bit clearer. Like what we as designers want from a timeline is sometimes quite different from what a game cinematic needs. So learning how Unreal developers do things has been really important to helping me achieve what I need to do. We've talked a lot about Unreal and why you may or may not want to go there, but what about After Effects? What, what keeps me there? What is indispensable about After Effects? I mean, uh, as I said, to be honest, less and less as Unreal keeps adding more stuff and I get more used to it, but there are two things that I always come back for. Simple compositing and vector animation. Compositing is a large field, but for me it includes a lot of simple VFX tasks that I do for clients. And a big reason why I stay with After Effects is, yes, because I'm familiar and experienced with it, but also Mocha AE. It's objectively a fantastic planar tracker and Mocha Import Plus makes it a silver bullet. A whole bunch of VFX revolves around tracking and replacing things. Track using Mocha and then using Mocha Import Plus gives you a stabilized pre-comp. And if you've done any VFX, you know how much that is gold for erasing things out of shots. Unreal can manage simple green screen stuff, but it's, I mean, let's just say it's more complex than it needs to be. Vector animation isn't in Unreal either. Like you can't animate splines, you can't bring vectors in in an editable state. Yes, in the, in the new motion design mode, there is a fun SVG import, and it's kind of like Blender where you can bring it in and extrude them but then you can't edit the points or change them in any meaningful way. To come back to the original question that I posed at the start, why bother learning yet another thing? Truthfully, the reasonable answer is closest. It is something that you'll have to decide for yourself. For me, I just felt like I was stuck in a rut with After Effects and the challenge of learning Unreal helped me break out of it. If you're interested in breaking into the world of Unreal, my next video will definitely be much more of a deep dive tutorial. So I'll see you there.